In this video we're going to learn how to override a method. So if you have a derived class or a subclass, it may inherit methods from a base class or superclass that doesn't quite do what you need it to do. So therefore you can override this method that comes from this derived class to make it do whatever you want. And the restriction is that the method must keep the same name as the method and the same number and type of parameters. And you can also add an at override, at the, which is an annotation that you can add at the top of the method header that'll tell the compiler that you're trying to override a method. And it's recommended because if, if you're not overriding the method correctly, the compiler will forcefully give you an error by having this annotation there. So let's override some methods and see how this works. In this example, we have two objects. We have P, which is an instance of the person class, and we have S, which is an instance of the student class. And the student class is a person. The student extends person with inheritance. But first, let's take a look at the way that we're printing out the person's information. We're calling the p.getName is p.getAge years old, which gives us that Bob is 21 years old. So this would make more sense to put in a method of the person class. So let's delete this from here and move this code to person.java and let's create a method called display. Public void display. And paste that code right there. And I'm getting an error because the class has no idea what P is. So let's just remove that. And we don't actually have to have the get name method call because we're already in the class where we can access name directly. So let's just make this name is age years old. So by doing that we created a method called display that we can use by simply saying p.display. And let's run the program and there it is. It's doing the same thing. So since we know that student is a person we should also be able to call the same display method with student s.display. Let's run that and we get that Mary is 19 years old. Okay, but what happened to Mary's student ID number? How do we get that to display also using the same display method call? We can't update the display method in person to display student ID because the person class has no knowledge of student ID. It only belongs to the subclass student. So what we could do is override the display method. And to do that, you simply create another display method with the same method header and cite student. Let's do that right here. And we can make this do whatever we want. System.out.println SID is student ID. Let's print that out right there and watch what's going to happen now. When I go back to demo and run the program, Bob is 21 years old is what p.display does, but the student object.display only prints out the student ID number. So we lost the name and we lost the age. You could just go in here and say, sorry, go back to the student class and update this to print out the name and, and age also by saying system. Actually, let's just go in there and copy the one from person. Where is it? Here it is. Stick this inside our other display method to make that do the same thing. And we can't access name and age directly because they're private fields. So we could either make them protected or we can just call the get age method and get name method, whatever is easier for you. And this should work a little bit better. Let's try it. And now it's working. It's saying that Bob is 21 and Mary is 19 and here's Mary's student ID. But here's an even better way to do it. Let's go back. And we know that this code is pretty much the same code as the code from person. So why don't we just call the display method that we're getting from the person class. And we can do that by saying super.display. That's basically going to say do whatever the previous display method did and in addition to it do whatever is underneath. Print out the student ID. So by doing that and rerunning the demo program with the main method we get the same output. Bob is 21 years old, and for if it's a student, calling the same method, we're getting the name, age, and the student ID as well. So that is method overriding. 
having a method inside of a base class and replacing that method's functionality with a method in the subclass to be more specific to the object that's calling it. And if you hover the mouse over the display method for P, it tells you it's coming from the person class. And if you hover the mouse over the display method for the student, S, it tells you it's coming from the student class. So what it does is it starts at the from the calling object, and if it doesn't have a display method, it goes up one level to the class that it extends. And if, if it's not there, it just keeps going up the inheritance hierarchy until it finds that first method, and that is the one that it calls. But by you creating your own method, you are overriding the one that you got from an inherited class. And that is method overriding, which you should not confuse with method overloading, which means having the same method multiple times in the same class, but differs in the number and type of parameters.